Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello again. So uh, this is going to be a session where I will shall summarize what we have done for these four weeks in great experiments in psychology. So when I started designing this course, I had a feeling that this would be really easy to do with. And uh, to be honest with you, uh, this designing 20 uh, lectures, uh, in fact 19 of them, uh, it has really taken up a lot of time and consideration and conflicts and um, uh, burning the midnight lamp. One of the major reasons being that there is so much to be covered in psychology and especially the experiments and studies. Initially I thought that I will only discuss about the experiments, but then I felt that if I leave out some of the major studies that have been done in psychology, then I will be doing injustice to this subject. So, I, uh, so what we have talked about so far in these four lectures to summarize, we have spoken about the history of psychology in the first module, primarily we have discussed about the philosophers and their contributions to psychology and then we moved into the psychophysical part. So, where the physiologists, physicists, mathematicians were having, um, uh, 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 were contributing to the subject of psychology. And there we spoke about Weber and Fechner. And then finally, we, we moved into modern psychology and the establishment of psychology as a science. And there we spoke about Wundt, Titchener, and after that, we spoke about uh, Darwin and Galton and their contributions to psychology as a science. Moving on from that, in the second week, we spoke about, uh, I, I plan to structure this as cognitive and social psychology. And there I faced a lot of confusion primarily because there are just too many experiments in cognitive and social psychology that I would like to discuss. But I just selected uh, Ebbinghaus where I felt that when I am talking about memory, uh, I need to mention Ebbinghaus. Without Ebbinghaus's study and especially his contribution in nonsense syllables, we could not move forward with memory. After that, it would be better if I could discuss some of the other uh, memory experiments, but then I moved on to something which is really interesting and especially it has a contribution to both uh, psychology and law. And there we talked about uh, the eyewitness testimony, primarily Loftus and Palmer's uh, experiment. Uh, and then we moved on to perceptual defense. So I, I you know, I could have done without uh, the McGuinness experiment on perceptual defense, but I felt that uh, primarily uh, this would also cover the area of advertising and especially when we are talking of subliminal perception and its use in advertising. So that is one of the reasons why I kept this study. And then I spoke about Festinger's cognitive dissonance. When you are talking of cognitive psychology and cognitive experiments, you cannot leave out Festinger. And so I, I did uh, try uh, to explain it um, very briefly. And of course, uh, the most controversial experiment in psychology till date is Milgram's obedience experiments. So we could not leave that out. And I also felt and I still feel today that Milgram's experiments is primarily um, a, a, a picture of the society uh, and how the political, geopolitical or socio-political conditions affected the development and the studies in psychology. So, uh, Milgram was a Jew as we spoke about and um, he hailed from East Europe and he was really affected by the, uh, the, the condition of the Jews and um, he was, he also had his uh, ideas about uh, the Germans. So, the Germans are different hypothesis, we spoke about that. And uh, so, the studies were based on the Germans are different hypothesis. So, it I, I felt that this is, this is not only important because of its, um, because of the ethical issues that this study raised, but it was also important to discuss this primarily because of the uh, socio-political influence on psychology and on psychological studies. So, uh, then moving on to uh, module 3, 
uh, we spoke about, uh, I, I tried to discuss uh, clinical and health psychology and where I talked about Watson's experiment with little Albert. Now, there was this confusion that Watson's experiment with little Albert could be placed in the cognitive and social psychology section also. If I was really covering behaviorism in the cognitive section, then I could actually put it there. But then its influence on the development of uh, treatments for phobia, I thought that it would be a better idea to put it in the clinical psychology section. And of course, we discussed OCD and especially Rappaport's influential article on OCD and how it uh, changed the mindset, mindset towards OCD, especially uh, the diagnosis and um, the prevalence of OCD. It actually made a Rappaport's study made a lot of difference and brought about a lot of um, an alertness in the uh, common population about uh, OCD being a clinical diagnosis and that it could be treated. So, uh, that is one of the reasons why I introduced this in our module 3. And um, you know, when we are talking about uh, clinical diagnosis, we could not really leave out Rosenhan. So, I spoke about uh, Rosenhan 1973 study on sanity and insanity and especially the criticisms against it. So, whether, uh, so this was also I thought it would be a good chance to bring to the picture the anti psychiatry movement and especially where people were saying that in schizophrenia where people are behaving differently does not mean that they need to be a, given a diagnosis and put into the hospital. So, basically the clinical diagnosis did not mean anything. So, mm, uh, the, an, the anti psychiatry movement if you really wish to study more about it and uh, read more about the psychology experiments. I, I, I try to bring out uh, you know small bits uh, to give you the flavor of psychology from different aspects. And uh, of course, uh, this is one of my favorites that is the story of Dibs. And if you if you really go through Virginia, Virginia Axelin's book on Dibs, you will uh, see the importance of uh, the responsiveness towards a child. And you know, I uh, this book was written way back, but even today, even today it is very important for the concept of play therapy. So, uh, this unconditional regard towards a child uh, is very important uh, and especially this is very well reflected in DIBS. So, though DIBS is not uh, an, a, a study that has been published in uh, one of the major journals in psychology or psychiatry, I still thought that it would be interesting and it would be important to discuss uh, Virginia Axelin's uh, role in DIBS life and actually how uh, this study on play therapy could bring about so much of a change. So, anybody who is interested in the therapeutic patterns could start with reading DIBS. So, um, there are uh, many more people that we should have probably covered, but I uh, then spoke about uh, one of the most interesting uh, cases in clinical psychology that is about Cleckley and Thickpin's uh, uh, three phases of Eve or uh, the, the story of uh, Eve or Chris uh, Sizemore and uh, the multiple personality disorder or as it is better known today as dissociative identity disorder. So, this was um, this has also changed the picture of uh, DID or dissociative identity disorder in the world. So, this study is uh, one of the major studies in clinical psychology and as we all know uh, that it was um, the three phases of Eve was actually uh, made into a film and it was um, the uh, actress also won the Golden uh, Globe Awards as well as the Oscars. So, um, this is also this is not only interesting reading, but it is also important to understand how uh, you know psychology uh, explains or expresses itself in different uh, different domains in life. So, we spoke about uh, experimental psychology, cognitive social psychology, clinical and health psychology and in the final module where I was supposed to cover more of individual differences and culture, you know there were just too many things that were still left. And you know uh, as again uh, class divided by Jean Elliott uh, is one of the major uh, influential uh, studies uh, done by a, by, by, a, in, by an individual who is not a part of the 
psychology fraternity. Now, I think, I personally feel that it would be wrong to say uh, that Eliot is not a part of the fraternity, because she showed that you can actually talk about discrimination, teach about discrimination through a class activity. And here, she, as she always says, that this is not an experiment, this is a test that she tried to uh, conduct on her children. And she does not wish to see this being conducted several times. She would wish to see that uh, discrimination was eradicated. So, uh, it is not necessary that uh, um, an experimentally uh, proper, following an experimentally proper methodology, an experiment can only be done by psychologists um, belonging to a university or, um, uh, or, or you know, an academic, uh, academic yeah, here. So, it is, uh, you know, and that brings to back uh, the case of Ebbinghaus, because Ebbinghaus did not belong to a university. This was way back, and he carried on his experiments at home. And he, his only subject on memory experiments was himself. But he followed the experimental conditions to the core. So, he also, as we have discussed earlier, he would conduct the experiments at a particular time of the day, so that, uh, you know, he could control the other variables. So, the diurnal variations could be controlled. And um, thereafter, uh, I thought that we must talk about the false consensus effect. So, false consensus effect here again could be spoken about in cognitive and social psychology section. But then, uh, I felt that, you know, this would also be a good section where we could talk about how we perceive people and how we um, perceive what they are going to do. So, um, there was another very important um, study that uh, we could have taken up on prejudice, but um, I, I felt that uh, it would be better to actually talk about the false consensus effect, so that it helps us to understand uh, when you are uh, interacting with people, you can also judge for yourselves uh, whether you are also suffering from this perceptual bias. And uh, uh, this, uh, you know, I, I feel that uh, this Lee Ross's experiment could actually be conducted by you, if you wish to do so. And so, with uh, the measurement of uh, androgyny by BEM. So, this was, uh, again, this, I, I took this up, not only because it would be very appropriate for this section, but also because uh, this tells us a lot about how to construct a scale and how to administer a scale. So, what are the characteristics that need to be addressed when you are trying to construct a scale? When you are even trying to do an opinion poll, how would you do it? So, um, that is why I, I, int I added this to the section and finally, the marshmallow test by Michelle. So, uh, this again, you know, I, I did not have a section for developmental psychology. So, I felt that this would be a good uh, section to perhaps discuss this. And um, this, especially because of the predictive value of this test. So, think about this is very socially appropriate. And so, I thought that maybe, you know, uh, module 4 of, uh, for individual differences in culture could be focusing more on the socially important uh, structures uh, that, uh, that, that can be applicable to this day, and which you could, uh, you know, probably conduct the experiments yourself. So, uh, you know, I, I do not think uh, to be true that I have jan done justice to uh, the, uh, to the uh, domain of psychology, to the, to the discipline of psychology, when I am talking of experiments and studies. Uh, especially because there is just too much of things left. Um, you know, I did not talk about, when I am talking about experiments and studies, I did not talk about the most influential psychologist of our time. So, that is Sigmund Freud and his case of little hands. Nor did I talk about one of my favorite, again, uh, Albert Bandura or the um, individual, uh, this uh, Bobodol experiment, Albert Bandura's Bobodol experiment, where he shows, shows that aggression can be learned. And he uh, speaks about the social learning theory. So, we spoke about uh, learning to an extent, but uh, you know, when we are talking about memory, maybe I, I gave references about learning, but we have not, we have not really spoken about uh, Albert Bandura and his social learning theory. And again, one of the very interesting studies is Deregowski's 1972 study on pictorial perception and culture. 
that is also a very interesting study especially which shows that you know uh, most of our learning is because of the our geo uh, social conditions and how we are especially uh, looking at things. So, our perception of things are dependent on uh, our geographical conditions. So, that is where we are staying, how we are seeing things. So, and that is learned. So, it is a very interesting study. If you wish to go through it, you can uh, look up uh, Deragoski 1972. And um, of course, another very important experiment, I spoke about obedience and Milgram's experiment, but I uh, did not, I missed out on Zimbardo's prison experiment. So, if you, if you ever uh, put on a Google search on the great experiments in psychology, no matter where you uh, click on to, you will always see Zimbardo's Stanford prison uh, experiment uh, being one of them. So, um, I, I do not think that uh, I, I did justice to this, I should have discussed, but uh, the unfortunate thing is we did not have the time, it was just a 10 hours course and I just wanted to give you a different perspective of the different areas, different uh, of, the, of the scope of psychology. And um, again, one, uh, I, I, the major section in psychology that is um, being studied today and has been studied for quite some time is emotions and we have not studied, we have not talked about any experiment on emotion and primarily uh, you know again one of the very important studies on emotion is on Schachter Singer's uh, two factor theory of emotions. So, this experiment is a very interesting one. So, if you wish to go through this experiment, you can just uh, check it out, you will see Schachter Singer's experiment uh, available online. And uh, again talking about uh, social psychology, we should have talked about the bystander effect, where Dali and Latane in 1968 uh, spoke about our individual responsibilities uh, during an emergency situation, how we respond um, in our in an emergency situation with especially the bystander effect talks about the diffusion of responsibility. If somebody else is there, we, we feel that well. Um, I mean the, it, the responsibility is shared. So, why not the other individual go and help? So, this this was a very interesting study again and I feel we should have talked about this. And um, one of the old experiments in social psychology and one of the classic experiments in social psychology I should say is Solomon Ash's experiment on social conformity or the pressure to conform to social standards. So, this is again one section that we could not cover perhaps because it was a 10 hour course. And um, again uh, the effect, the Hawthorne effect that is again a perspective in industrial psychology which we left out. And there are yet many more experiments and studies that we should have talked about. And the list just goes on and on and probably half an hour would not be long enough uh, for me to complete this list. But I hope to see you again and I um, hope that we can have further interactions on, um, the, on the great uh, works in psychology and I hope that whatever I tried to cover in this course was meaningful and um, has raised your interest in psychology from before. Thank you.